Hey guys, I'm Nath Martin, The Whiskey Scribe, and today I'm here at the Heilman Whiskey Distillery. We've just been through and done a fantastic tour. As you can see, it's a pretty hot day. This isn't really whiskey tasting weather. It's pretty hot and sweaty, but we persevered and we got an opportunity to taste six different whiskeys from his 30 plus expressions. And some of these haven't even been released yet. Now there are 28 different barrel types here, more than any other distillery I've ever seen. And this includes things like Pinot Noir, Apera, Tawny Port, Ex Lafroic barrels, Oloroso Sherry, uh, Pedro Jimenez Sherry, Ex Bourbon barrels, and even Maple Syrup barrels. So the distilling setup uses a mash tun and a copper still that were purchased in Tasmania. Now the copper still was originally a fire still, and Dan had it retrofitted with a heating element for better temperature regulation. The water here is all sourced from natural brooklets from a local farm in Byron Bay, which is then UV filtered before use. He barrels all his whiskey at 55% ABV. This is because with Australia's climate, he's found the high ABVs can sometimes pull some of those more bitter flavors out of the casks, while 55% seems to be that sweet spot where you get the maximum character without any of the damaging flavors. Now being Australia, the Angel's share is huge. He loses about four or five times more than that of Scotland, approximately about 10% a year. Now when you hear about distilleries charring their barrels, the highest they usually go is up to a level 5 char. Highwaymen have been experimenting with wine casks going up to 8 or 9 level char. They found that this draws more of the sugars out of the wood, allowing the whiskey in the barrel to taste more like they've come from fortified wine casks. Now there's actually a colour coding to the bottle selections here. So the first 10 Highwaymen releases, they're identified with a brown label, and that's because they were independent bottlings. From 2021, or batch 2.0 on, the black labels with brown text mean that it's 100% Byron made. They are literally handcrafted. Every barrel is bottled on the very table we were tasting from. And then you've got the red text on black labels, which represents the peated releases, which started in 2022. The first whiskey we got to try was the 2.7, which was an exclusive bottling for Australian Whiskey Appreciation Society was a single cask, super heavy char with dry red wine. The second whiskey we got to try was actually a micro batch. And this was a limited run that had been aged in rye and apera casks. And there were only 12 bottles made of this and we were getting to try one of them. Now the next two whiskies we tried are called Demons Rising. And they were a recent collaboration between Highwaymen and AOB. And there's an interesting backstory to this. AOB contracted 6,000 liters of new make to be made on Dan's still before he even bought it and they've been aging away, but it's now been blended with peated Highwayman whiskey made on the same still. So the whiskey has come from a range of barrels, including Tawny, Apera, Sweet Wine, Bourbon, and more. So one portion of this batch was finished in mead and rum casks, batch one, and the second portion was finished in maple syrup casks, batch two. Next, we got to try the 3.4, which was finished in tequila casks. And then we got to finish up with the 3.3 Hallow's Eve, which have been aged in 100 litre French oak, super heavy charred red wine casks. After the tasting, most of us couldn't resist just buying at least one bottle. And then we went back out into the heat because the still had been operating the whole time we were in the tasting room and now we we're getting to taste the tails. So we had this opportunity to go out and literally take a glass and take a pour of the new make as it was coming out of the still. By this point, it was down to about 39% ABV and it was actually very drinkable. For a new make, it was soft, creamy, and you could even taste these faint hints of orange or kumquat that tended to pop up in the whiskey that we were trying today. So this was a great experience because any previous whiskey distillery I've visited has been one of the major Scottish distilleries. So to be able to visit a micro distillery like this here in Australia, where it's local, it's Australian, and it's being made by somebody who's 100% across the entire process is fantastic. So if you're anywhere near Byron and you love whiskey half as much as I do, it is well worth the trip. Dan takes bookings for tours and masterclasses and you won't be disappointed. If you'd like to see more of this, whether it's whiskey tasting reviews, information about whiskey or distillery tours, hit subscribe. Excuse me for now, I'm gonna go and have the dog.